You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey friends, hey, welcome back to another episode of Side Hustle Pro Podcast. Today I am back with a solo episode where I will be talking about how to get unstuck. It's July and half of the year is gone. It's time to really take a step back, reflect on what has worked, what hasn't, and what we're going to do about it. And I have some tips to share. And in between the tips, I'll kind of share some updates as well. Just some things I experienced since our last solo that have really been food for thought. And I hope it helps you as well. So let me just do a quick check of my equipment. If you see me over here on YouTube, you will see that I am recording again from my bedroom. And I have my portable microphone, shore microphone here. Okay, everything according to Riverside is good and great. So now let's get into it. First of all, if you're feeling stuck, it is perfectly normal. I don't care who you are. We all start out the year with so much expectation and vigor, and we just expect that things are going to go a certain way because we have recommitted to our goals. And then things happen, right? You can't control for everything that happens in life. And the year might not be going exactly how you expected it to, and that's okay. What you have to do now is decide, what am I going to do about it? So the first tip that I want to share is it's time to get into spiritual gym. I talked about it a little bit in my last episode, how I learned about this concept, that I make up this concept. When I began this year reading, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero, right? And I actually took a little mini boot camp challenge with Jen. And it was really good at awakening my commitment to speaking life over myself. And it kind of tied hand in hand with my spirituality. You know, I believe in God. I use spiritual because, of course, everyone believes in something different. You might be Muslim, you might be Buddhist, what have you. So it's all about tapping into what helps you to feel aligned to who you talk to and how you then use those principles to talk to yourself. So a spiritual gym can look like the literal gym because for some people working out unlocks a lot of aha moments and creative thoughts and things like that. For some people it's daily or a few times a week Bible study. So I do try to do some Bible reading and I do some meditation. I use the superhuman app. I meditate a little differently. I talked about that where I might listen to something, but I might still be moving as I'm listening to affirmations or I might listen to the affirmations a little bit more quickly. I read my devotional. I write. I go on our balcony. I look out and that really helps me to unlock expansive thoughts. Whatever it is, anytime that I notice that I'm in a bad mood, it usually means that I have not gotten in the spirit gym in a while. And a spiritual gym also looks like for me, making sure that I do something for my health, that I'm taking care of myself. I'm paying attention to what I'm putting in my body, from the food to the water to the movement. And we'll talk about movement in a second. But whenever I find myself in a funk, getting in the spiritual gym helps me to start to course correct for that. So Make sure you're becoming one with your thoughts and you're really paying attention to the things that you're saying to yourself. That is so key because so many of us, we let those subconscious thoughts reign and those subconscious thoughts there's some there be haters. Like you, you are your own hater a lot of times. You're telling yourself, oh man, girl, how can you not be further ahead by now? Why are you doing this? Oh, there you go, procrastinating again. All these thoughts just are loop in your head unless you stop them. It's up to you to stop them. No one else can do it for you. And so that means that you have to develop a spiritual gym practice. It doesn't have to be in the morning. It doesn't have to be every day but you have to be able to spend some time clarifying what's going on in your mind. How can we get back to a centered place? Because that's where it all starts. So first things first is if you haven't been getting in that time with yourself, now is the time to develop some kind of practice where you do. And again, it's not about, it doesn't have to be daily and it doesn't have to be so strict. (music) 
So speaking of strict, let's talk about tip number two, move your body. And I say move your body for a reason. I don't say exercise because when you hear the word exercise, it conjures up these big, massive goals. Like, all right, I'm going to start back running five times a week. I'm going to walk 30 minutes a day every day for, you know, seven days a week. Oh, I'm going to start taking Pilates three times a week, strength training two times a week. I'm going to start that program on Peloton. I'm going to start that program on Beachbody. I'm going to jump in so-and-so's challenge. You get the drift. Anytime you hear exercise, you start thinking, I need to start on Monday and I need to do this intense activity regularly. No. When I say move your body, I literally mean get you some kind of tracker. It can be Fitbit. It can be Apple Watch. It could be the cheap one off Amazon. I used the cheap one off Amazon for a long time. And track your steps. Make sure you are moving. Well, however many steps you want to start with is up to you. I think that they recommend something like, I think they recommend by category between 5,000 to 8,000. And then when you want to push yourself, you can start looking at 10,000. Don't start out trying to hit 10,000 steps if you have been living a sedentary lifestyle. If you work from home, when I'm just working from home and not paying attention to my steps, I'm averaging like three, 4,000, right? So I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to hit 10,000 every day because that's not practical for me right now. But I can aim for 8,000. Why? Because I got a mini stepper off of Amazon. So when I see that, oh, I only got 4,000 just naturally going about my day that's way working from home, I can get on the mini stepper. Or it's even better when I start my day with the mini stepper because I know 20, even 25 minutes of just devoted time to myself, I'm going to hit and meet my 8,000 step goal. So move your body because that is one of the ways that, again, you unlock endorphins that unlock happy feelings and also unlock these aha epiphanies of what you should be doing in life, in business. Having that focus, repetitive motion allows you time to think to step away from whatever else is is challenging you or giving you stress and just have a moment to have clarity in your thoughts. Try it. Let me know how it feels. Commit to moving your body. You can go for a walk outside. If you don't want to do the mini stepper, you can um, do whatever, bicycle. And I'm talking about slow. I'm not talking about no intense walk and I'm not talking about running. Do not sign up for a challenge. <laughs> do not do it. No boot camps over here. Just move your body. Most of us are not getting enough steps. And you'll be surprised that if you just start moving your body before you even change your diet or anything like that, some of the stress weight that you might have on, you'll see that it starts to kind of melt off a little bit because the key thing that packs on the pounds for a lot of us is the fact that we are not moving. We're not moving our bodies and you don't realize it because you're not tracking your steps. So get a tracker, move your body. Tip number three, speaking of move your body, get some sun, get some sun. I have, a, we have a balcony patio, whatever you want to call it. And there are days that I'm like, why well, haven't I gotten any sun? I literally just have to open my balcony door and go outside. I have made it a commitment to get some sun. Open the windows, but it's even better if you just step outside and step outside with intentionality, not step outside to hop on the metro or, you know, hop on the train, stop, hop on the subway, none of that. Step outside intentionally for a moment for yourself. When we lived in the DMV area, I used to really love going on walks to CVS. <laughs> That was my zen, happy moment. It just brought me joy. We used to live in walking distance. We're no longer walking distance to a CVS, so that's no longer my happy place. But we're walking distance to some nice greenery, some nice overlooks. And I like to take a time when I can to do that or just get out on the balcony, sit down. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably see me, um, you know, just sit out there, cross leg, take a moment, take my coffee, take my tea, and take some time to breathe in that fresh air because that is another cheat code for unlocking happy feelings, for helping to de-stress. If you take a moment to get some sun and breathe, you'll be surprised how your mood shifts. And all of this ties back into the spiritual gym because before we can make any shift for the next half of the year, 
We have got to get our mood and our mind right. And this is in no way a replacement for talking to your therapist or getting mental health advice and guidance, right? But the things that you can do daily all support that. Any therapist will tell you, make sure that you are getting some sun, you're getting up and moving your body. So all of this supports that in addition to speaking to someone. All right, number four, change your scenery. All right, so this is where I'm going to get into some updates about what I've been up to. So change your scenery. If you find that this year is not going exactly according to plan or how you expected it to, it's time to change things up. It's time to change that scenery. That's the only way you're going to shake yourself out of the routine that you're in right now. The routine that's making you keep do the same things and expect different results. You can't keep doing the same things and expect different results. It's time to pause whatever you've been doing and shake things up. So I want to talk about my own shakeup that I did. So recently, this past 4th of July weekend, I actually flew on the 4th of July. I and my sister traveled to Essence Fest in New Orleans. So Essence Fest, they actually celebrated their 30-year anniversary this year. They had a slew of performances at the concert, including Usher to celebrate. And it takes place in New Orleans every year. I think a couple of years they tried a different city. It didn't work. And it's sponsored, put on by the Essence magazine, the publication, as well as Essence was recently purchased. So that whole family that owns them is um, putting it on now. Now, I have never been to Essence Fest. Essence Fest is a huge deal for a lot of brands and partners and influencers, Black influencers, because Essence is a magazine devoted to Black womanhood. It is very much in line with what we do here over at Side Hustle Pro. It's supposed to be amplifying Black women, our everything from our business to our lifestyle, just supporting overall health and well-being. And I went to Essence Fest. First of all, the planning for Essence Fest, if you're really trying to go, you have to start planning it like a year in advance. So my sisters went last year. I was very, very pregnant and I just could not go in that heat walking around doing all that. And I definitely had FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, but they did not allow me to go. They did not allow me to act on my FOMO. And I'm so glad they didn't because going this year, that's really not the place to be when you're pregnant. That is not that heat is a, it's, it's a risk. It's a liability, right? So Essence Fest is something you have to plan a year in advance. So a year ago, I was very, very pregnant. And once my sister started the planning, I was in the pregnancy and, and then postpartum vortex, just just a haze of motherhood. I was like, whatever, oh, we're staying here. We're doing this. Cool. I, I think I bought my tickets like sometime early this year, finally, blah, 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 right? I was not really fully present, but I knew I wanted to go. And I also knew that I wanted an opportunity to go with a completely open mind, like a blank canvas. I wasn't going to, I didn't have the energy to try to go as Nikayla Side Hustle Pro. I was just going as Nikayla. I, I wasn't reaching out to a brand to sponsor me. I wasn't reaching out to try to speak because I don't know if you know, but after you have a baby, like things just shift each, each and every time it shifts your sense of self, who you are, all these different things are in flux. And I just didn't feel like myself. And so going into this trip, I was looking forward to changing the scenery and getting back to myself. My daughter is about 10 months now. This is my first trip away from them, both of the kids at the same time. And it was a lot of emotions going on. It was me missing them, me worried about them, but also me trying to take in the full experience and me trying to understand what the heck was going on. Because <laughs> this is my first time here. It's huge. It is a lot. It was a real change of scenery because yes, I've been to New Orleans, but I hadn't been in like over 10 years. And so I'm taking in New Orleans. I'm taking in the festival at the convention center. I'm taking in the concert. I am just taking it all in. And my sisters and my best friend, they're hitting me up like, hey, aren't you going to create any content? Why are we not seeing nothing on your stories? Blah, blah, blah. And I really, really shout out to my sisters and my best friend for doing that because I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel like Nikayla, the content creator. So I was like, I don't even know where to begin. That's not me. I don't know what to do. But when they said that, I said, you know what? Get back to it. Get back to it. Start documenting some of this experience. So I dusted off my iPhone, wiped off the camera, and started recording. And, and you, you'll see that reel up on my page. I posted it on Facebook as well, LinkedIn, TikTok, I believe. 
just like taking in the experience of being there. And what that did for me, changing my scenery, it allowed me to step away from Nikayla the mom and businesswoman to get back to that feeling of Nikayla the creative, Nikayla the person who is so inspired by Black women that she wants to do everything in her power to elevate us and to support our mission to launch our businesses, to be able to replace our income if we want, to just do what sets us on fire, to be passionate and do it and find out how to actually make a vision in our head come to life. I went back to that 2016, Nikayla, and it felt so good because ideas were just popping into my head. I had to be writing stuff down on the plane. I was like, oh, I want to get my podcast on the plane. They have podcasts on the plane. All right. We, we got to reach out to Spotify. We got to reach out, reach out to Apple. Like the, It was like rapid fire just shooting off my brain. And in addition to that, I saw some discourse on threads, but I didn't really engage in it because, you know, when you just had a really positive experience and other people didn't, and y'all know how I feel about maintaining my positivity. I talked a little bit about that in my last solo episode, so go check it out. I was like, I don't want to go there because that wasn't my experience. I, I had a, nothing but a pleasant, positive experience. Of course, there are downsides to Essence Fest. There's traffic, you're walking everywhere, bring comfortable shoes. It's hot. There are long lines in the convention center, yada, 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 right? I had an awesome time experiencing it, spending quality time with my sister. We don't get that kind of quality time these days as adults. So I wanted to maintain on that high. And what I took away from the experience is I'm really glad that I went as Nikayla, the person, not Nikayla, the side hustler, or Nikayla, the podcaster, or Nikayla, talent, whatever. Because one, I, I'm always going to be humble. Like, I feel that... It's so weird when you do something for a living and you might have a big social media following on one channel or a few channels. And so what people expect of you is kind of interesting because it's like, well, I'm on a girl's trip taking this all in. But at the same time, some people are seeing me like, hey, aren't you with anyone? Are you speaking anywhere? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I don't want, actually don't even want to work. But because I did that, I was able to see and ask myself, hey, what would you want to do? If you come back here, what would you want to do? There are different things you can do at Essence Fest if you are a content creator, influencer, podcaster, whatever you want to classify yourself, entrepreneur, businesswoman. There's a few different tracks you can fall into. You can do a brand activation, aka the brands have these booths. They have goodies that they give away all in, in an effort to create brand awareness, as well as brand loyalty, that feel good feeling about the brand. I know Target had a huge line for their activation, but what they were doing that was so smart is they were making you sign up for the app. I already had the app, but if you didn't, you would have had to sign up for the app because once you got in, you got an additional Fenty gift if you showed them that you had their Circle app. So it's all in the mission of business at the end of the day, right? And and making them dollars at the end of the day, but they create these feel-good experiences. So they had some content creators who were hosting it, like they had a little runway where once you got in there, you could like walk the runway and they had you up on the big screens. And then that was hosted by some, some influencers and content creators. So you could do a brand activation, be kind of like a brand ambassador, or you could be someone who hosts a panel on stage they have different entrepreneurs and different like talks that they had with everything from beauty to um, things about the black economy, all different types of things. You could do that. You could do something at the concert. Like there are a few content creators or influencers who did some quick activities on the, the stage in between the main performers. So that was kind of cool. And I was able to take it all in. And because, again, of that change of scenery, the wheels were turning in my head and I was able to assess what do I want to focus on for the rest of the year. So for you, what do you want to focus on for the rest of the year? If you've gotten this far and you feel like you're not hitting your targets, your milestones, let's sit back and think about how can you scale back to one priority? People often use the word priorities plural when in fact priorities supposed to mean one thing. So what can you make your priority for the rest of this year? And how can you have a change of scenery to help you spend some time thinking that through? Can you take a solo retreat? Can you go to a coffee shop? One of the ways that helps me to have some actual deep work time is when I have 
coverage for the kiddos, when we have coverage for both kiddos, I will go to a coffee shop by our house and a focus two hours these days is like a week of work because of how I make use of that time. And that change of scenery away from my house, so I'm not thinking about the laundry, I'm not thinking about the dishes in the sink, all I'm thinking about is my work, it is so helpful. So you can go to a coffee shop, you can go to a park, it's nice outside. I'm telling you, nature, and I'm not even the biggest nature girl, but seeing some water, seeing some grass, seeing some trees and some sun together, sit down, inhale all of that, you will be amazed at what it does for your mind. And just think of some other ways that you could potentially just change up your scenery. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we took a trip in October 2022. We took a little Miami girls trip. And that as well, just having a moment away from the day-to-day -day grind, it helps me so much to return to a mental space that helps my business tremendously because you got to stay inspired. It's so funny because after I came back, someone hit me in the DMs. I want to shout him out, actually. Um, so thank you so much to Jarrett from It's About Damn Time. All right, you sent me a DM and you just said, hope you're doing well. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you and the content you provide. You're always inspiring. Hadn't told you that in a while, so I just want to remind you how dope you are. Even the greats need to be poured into. Thank you, Jared, because I needed that. You hit me at a moment where I just come back and thankfully had poured into myself by changing my scenery and I knew I had renewed vigor, but it just reminded me that I was doing the right thing. It was like, a, I, I believe in winks from God. It was like one of those winks, like, yes, keep pouring into yourself. So I thank you for pouring into me in that moment and reminding me that you truly enjoy my podcast because I'm not going to lie, like everyone has ego, right? I've been in a space where I feel sometimes a little bit forgotten and it's just a different season in life. Essence also taught me that if you're not putting yourself out there, the world continues to move on. It's not that you're forgotten. Like people are just like, oh, maybe she's not doing that no more. I haven't seen her in a while. I wonder what's going on with her, but nobody's actively going to find out and dig you out of your hole. You, you got to find your way back out of that and share with people. And then people are checking for you again. And it's a tough pill to swallow. You wish people would just always check for you at the level they are, at the height. But I don't even think you, we probably don't even need that, right? We need breaks. We need seasons where we're not on. This has been a tremendous season in other ways. You know, I have two beautiful children now. I've been able to spend such quality time with my daughter. I've kept these two humans thriving. I've found different new activities that for them to support their growth and development. I've learned new things about myself, me and hubby breaking in and finding our new stride, getting back to us, getting back to date nights. Like this has been important for other reasons, for personal reasons. But then now the business Nikki is itching to get back out there. And it showed me that if I want to achieve what I want to achieve for the rest of the year, I got to get back to showing up, putting myself out there. And so do you probably. So I just spent like half the damn episode on this tip, but wanted to give you a little update about what I've been up to while giving that tip. So now let me get to number five tip to feel unstuck is to face the facts. So oh, hold on. There's another funny that I saw that I want to share with y'all. One second. The tweet said... All of my plans for the future involve me waking up tomorrow with a sudden sense of discipline and adherence to routine that I have never displayed even once in my life. <laughs> and so that's what I mean by facing the facts. Like, sis, if you have spent this entire year telling yourself, all right, next week I'm going to start waking up at 5 a.m. to get on the stair stepper, and then I'll wake up the kids at 7 and get them ready for school scratch cut it out cut it out if it hasn't happened yet it's not gonna happen face the facts that's not what you do that's not a routine that you can stick to that's not who you are right now maybe ever so let's look at what you can actually do hmm maybe you're someone who needs to find a midday break to get your walk in or an evening time break you got to look at the facts and say that's not working that means it's probably not gonna work 
at least not now. So how can I shift? How can I recalculate? Face the facts. Stop trying to convince yourself that your plans in the future are going to involve you being a completely different person tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Tip number six, I learned about this from one of my recent guests. Her name, if you haven't listened to the episode already, you have to check it out. So her name is Alexis Barber. She is a Wharton MBA influencer and founder of a brand called Two Collective. I also love her podcast. She's a podcaster as well. And something that she talked about on her show, I don't know who originated this concept, but I I learned about it and loved it when she talked about it. So I'm paying it forward, is this concept of setting minimum and maximum goals. So So you know how when you get reinvigorated and you set your New Year's resolutions or just any goal in mind, most of us are setting goals that are maximum capacity goal. That is a goal that you're going to do when you're feeling your best. So things like waking up earlier than normal to work out, that's when you're feeling your best. Things like doing something five days a week, again, when you're feeling your best, doing things like answering this many messages, batch creating this many episodes, all these things. We set our maximum goal and we need to also set our minimum goals. For those weeks when the energy is not right, when we hit a snag, we might feel a little depressed, melancholy. What is our minimum that we can commit to? Is it walking for 10 minutes, three times a week? All right, then write down that minimum. So when you need to give yourself a pep talk, you can say, all right, I'm not in the mood to do this, but let me just get 10 minutes in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's what I'm going to do. If you haven't been able to stick to batch recording four episodes once a week or some whatever ridiculous thing you said or, or committed to reaching out to 25 people or applying to 25 jobs or what have you, what is the minimum that you're going to do? Because when you do something consistently over the course of time, that matters more than when you did something intensely for a short period of time. So focus more on the minimum goals. The max goals are great, but you have to understand that your life and your mood is going to ebb and flow. And you have to honor that. I have this year tapped in a lot more to respecting the ebbs and flow of my mood and my personality. I realized that when I have, I just had one like two days ago. All right. Two days ago, I was in such a bad mood. I was ready to quit it all. I was ready to throw my hands in the air. I was, when I tell you I was frustrated, I was about to call up people and I was frustrated. And I said, you know what? All right, this is a moment. This too shall pass. I will allow myself to have a bad moment. I won't call it a bad day because I feel like every every day has good and bad moments. But, but I said, I will allow myself this time. I will stop expecting myself to quickly get back into a good space. But what I will not do is act impulsively and say anything to anybody that I wouldn't say when I'm in a good mood. That's what I won't do. That's my minimum expectation for myself. I will breathe. I know I'm grumpy. I know I'm feeling bad and I will honor that and respect that. And, you know, if anyone comes across me and they're like, what's going on? I will say, hey, I'm in a low vibrational moment right now. I'm, I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling discouraged. I'll get over it. But right now I'm feeling discouraged. Me and Moyo had that talk. I was like, I'm feeling really discouraged today. I shared with him how I was feeling. You know, we talked about it. I was still feeling discouraged, but, you know, I let him know so that any of my attitude, he knows that it's not directed at him or because of him. But I just needed to work things out mentally. And I always do. I always come back to it. Life is ebbs and flows. When I was able to work it out mentally, I had said, okay, my minimum. And actually later that night, I got back into my groove. I was up till like 1, 2 a.m., which is not advisable when you have kids and they're going to pop out early in the morning. But I was so inspired. I got mad worked on that night because I said, you know what? I learned from going to Essence that if I just keep working, keep creating, keep telling people what I'm doing, because it's not just about posting on social media. I don't want you guys to get that confused. It's about I'm doing work and I'm here able to help people, whether it's through my podcast course or my coaching, my one-on-one VIP coaching. And if I don't tell you what I've accomplished, what I'm good at, and what I can do for you, you can't hire me. So it's not just about working on the product or working on what I do. It's also about telling you about it. And we can't be at either extreme for too long. Sometimes you just want to I like to say lay low and build, right? Sometimes I am in that zone, but then I also have to make sure I pop out. As Kendrick would say, I got to pop up. All right, let let them know. All right, and let them know what I do. And so 
you too have to face the facts, set minimum and maximum goals, and really just focus more on the minimum and the maximum in this season so that we can stay consistent and we can feel at the end of the year how we want to feel. Number seven, focus on what you can control. Focus on what you can control. How many times? Let's say it one more time together. Focus on what you can control. How many times are you going to get frustrated over things that are out of your control? No, we're not doing that anymore. So I can't control if the economy is doing what it's doing and it's making a comeback, but brands are going through a moment. There ebbs and there ebbs and flows with podcasting as well. And so, if brands are going through a moment where they're cutting budget and they're a little bit more skeptical or a little bit tighter with the purse strings for brand campaigns, I can't control that. What I can control is again how I'm showing up in the world, how I'm letting you know like who I am and why you should work with me. I'm over here, side hustle pro. We're gonna keep thriving. Nikayla's gonna keep teaching what she knows. She's gonna keep helping and inspiring people to not put themselves in boxes, to go out there and pursue their passions because they only have one life to live. That is what I'm here to do. And if anybody wants to get on board with that, that's cool, but that's not my only revenue stream. So I'm not gonna focus and get myself down in the dumps because of something that I cannot control. So that's my personal experience. What's your personal experience? You probably at some point have realized you can't control your boss. You can't control your boss's mood swings. You can't control your customers. Uh, You can't control how they show up, what they do, what they get frustrated about, and what they do when they get frustrated. So, you know, flip it to what you're actually experiencing and then think about what you can control and focus on that. You can focus on not letting anybody make you become someone who you don't want to be. You can focus on making sure that you're in charge of your emotions and your reactions and not letting anyone else be in charge of that, right? So these are things that we can control that then tie right back into our spiritual gym practice. And the spiritual gym practice, which is number one, is so very important because that's when we write down what we're going through, what we've learned from what we're going through, what we're not going to do again, if we had a bad moment, why we had that bad moment, and what we're not going to do again. So all of this ties right back into that. So focus on what you can control. Number eight is to take a step, any step, any action whatsoever. I have a few friends who I notice and I observe. And I, you know, when I talk to them, if they ever ask me for their advice, I don't give unsolicited advice now. But if they ever ask me, one of the things that I make sure to point out to them is you have to choose. You have to decide. All right, you're interested in that, then start doing that. Okay. And then it's up to them to do it. I'm always going to be here to reinforce those key messages over and over again. You have to choose and you have to take a step. So many of us are waiting for a sign. I won't even say us because I'm not waiting. I'm not, I'm not a part of that bucket anymore. So sorry, y'all. I'm not trying to say I'm better than y'all, but I will take a step. I might, I'm never going to know the right step to take. That. No, no one comes out. No one opens up the clouds and comes down from the heavens and says, this is what you should do. This is what's going to make you a millionaire. This is what's going to be the thing that's going to set your business on fire. No, nobody's telling me that. And yeah, I'm seven years into this entrepreneurship thing, going strong, doing what I need to do and learning and growing, having bumps along the way, learning and growing. Same thing with you. If you're not where you want to be this year, chances are you are not taking a step. Chances are you spent the first half of the year thinking, planning, trying to learn what step to take, but you have to take the step. You have to take the step, all right? Um, Something I, I usually tell my podcast mogul students too is, I don't care where you host your podcast. I'm going to give you suggestions on some of the the most reputable podcast hosts, right? That will give you accurate stats, but I don't care where you host. I don't care what you use to record. All I care about is if you feel comfortable using it, because if you feel comfortable using it, if the user interface is user-friendly for you to use, then that means you're going to stick with it. So that's first things first, because I want you to take a step. I want you to launch that podcast. I want you to start immediately implementing whatever marketing tips that I had to give to you specifically. I want you to take a step. I don't want you to sit here and ruminate and think about, oh, should I do this? What should my personal brand be? It's not about what your personal brand should be. It's What do you want to do? 
who do you want to serve? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be paid for? So if you enjoy doing something and people then start reaching out to you and say, hey, could you, if you start taking pictures and people are like, hey, could you take my pictures? Because the, people will reach out to you if you start doing something and sharing that you're doing something. If you don't want people to reach out to you for that, do that thing, but don't start promoting each and every time you do content about that thing that you're doing, because that's not what you want your personal brand to be. That's not what you want to be known for. So don't do that. <laughs> okay. But take a step towards something you wouldn't mind being known for. If you can't answer the question of what do I want to be known for? That is okay. Don't let that keep you in procrastination, stagnation mode. Start doing things that you genuinely enjoy doing and then you will get to the point where you're like, hey, I really like this. And something else that people get confused is they are looking for the one. When it comes to side hustles, they are looking for the one. Like, ooh, what side hustle do I want to marry? Who do I want to settle down and have kids with? <laughs> when I tell you it's not that deep, it's not that deep. Decide what you want to do for this season, this chapter in your life. If you ultimately, A, don't like it, or B, decide to move on from it, then so be it. You've heard me talk to people on this show who are either no longer doing that business or transition how that business works. Um, even just recently, we talked to Julia Coney. She's on her second and third act. She had a thriving beauty blog, and she decided, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to talk about wine. I want to travel the world and write about food and wine and be paid to do that. And now she's American Airlines' wine consultant. What if she was like, you know what? I don't want to start a blog because I don't know if I want to be beauty forever. She would have missed out on the amazing, awesome experiences she had as a beauty blogger because she was waiting to get the aha moment that she should be a wine and food blogger in another 10 years. Don't do that. Take a step. Start the blog. Start the podcast. Start writing on LinkedIn. Start writing on Instagram and TikTok, make the content, test out creating a, a sample product of the thing you want to make, learn more about an industry you want to go in, you know, listen to more podcasts and then take a step. All right. Don't just listen. Don't just read. Just take the course. Take a step. Do just in time learning. Only do one course at a time and then take a step. Take the exact steps that you learn in the course. So that's step number eight. And then finally... If you want to feel unstuck, it's time to reflect and have gratitude. No matter what is going on in your life, I mean, I don't want to be trite. I know that there are some hard moments, so don't get me wrong. I'm not going to paint a sweeping brush over everyone's life, but I believe that in most cases, you have something to be grateful for. So... When you take a moment to just sit down and think about the things that you have to be grateful for, that's another cheat code to unlocking those happy feelings, to gaining perspective and reminding yourself it's not that bad. It's going to be okay. Life was meant to be a big, confusing, dark box and then us get glimmers of light until we finally figure out where we're going. It wasn't meant to be given this roadmap this, despite what education tries to teach you. It wasn't meant to go from, you know, kindergarten to college to this school to this school, and then boom, you have unlocked it. Now you know what to do. It was meant for us to keep figuring it out. And the sooner that we get to the place where we're grateful for this journey, and the more you realize that life is meant to be enjoyed while we figure stuff out, the more you can take a deep breath. Go enjoy your life. Be grateful. Do these tips that we talked about and finish this year differently than the first half of the year. So let me recap those tips one last time for you. It's number one, get in the spiritual gym. Two, move your body. Three, get sun. Four, change your scenery. Five, face the facts. Six, set minimum and maximum goals. Seven, focus on what you can control. Eight, take a step, any step. And nine, reflect and have gratitude. And with that, let's go forth, enjoy and conquer the rest of this year. I will talk to you next week. 
Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six bullet Saturday newsletter at sidehustleproco slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.